they're they're not going to be a kingmaker. There's nine ETFs that are ready to go right now that they could approve at any point from now until January 10th, essentially. And I keep saying January 10th because that's the deadline for that's the first full deadline where the SEC can no longer delay. They either have to approve or deny, and that's for the ARK and 21 shares application. This content is brought to you by Uphold, which is a great crypto platform that I've been using since 2018. Uphold has all the top cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and all the altcoins. In fact, they have 260 plus cryptocurrencies on their platform. You can also trade precious metals, stable coins, and 37 fiat currencies. In addition, they are available in over 150 countries. And this platform is fully reserved. They do audits. So you can trust that your funds are safe. No commingling, no lending out your funds. If you'd like to learn more about Uphold, please visit the link in the description. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. With me today is James Seifert, who's an ETF research analyst at Bloomberg Intelligence. James, great to have you on, my friend. Thanks for having me, Tony. Happy to be here. Well, James, yesterday, another fake out that we've experienced. This time, uh, the news around a BlackRock XRP trust being filed. Uh, Tell us about that. What what happened here and how the hell could someone file a fake application? So first of all, I don't know. Uh, I don't have enough details. All I know is that I saw it and I had a lot of people tagging me, asking me questions. I had clients messaging me on the Bloomberg. Is this real? Um, And basically, I went to the website and we were able to confirm, yeah, it's real. It was on the website. This is actually there. This filing looks similar to the way the Ethereum trust filing was filed. It looks similar to the way that the iShares Bitcoin trust was filed. I was like, but this just doesn't seem right. You, I've been on with you before. And I was like, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, essentially. And I was like... I I don't I can't the only way they would be doing this if they were really going after the SEC, which it didn't make much sense to me. So, but it took like twenty. We reached out to BlackRock, and sure enough, we came back. I I talked to somebody, or my colleagues in Bloomberg News talked to somebody else at BlackRock. My my boss Eric Balchunas talked to somebody at BlackRock, and they all came back and were like, "No, this isn't us. We're we're." looking to rectify and figure out what happened. Uh, still, there's a lot of people on Twitter that are like adamant that like we're just making this up. But <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, BlackRock, their official comms, people have said this wasn't them. They did not file for this. And they're trying to get to the bottom of how it could could have could have happened. Um, but I don't know enough about the the process for registering a Delaware trust to, to tell you exactly how somebody could spoof it. But um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's the lay of the land, I guess. Yeah, and, and and I think the other fact too, right, which is the uh, huge overarching issue, the Ripple SEC litigation situation, while there have been some things that have been resolved, it's not entirely resolved. So I can imagine, you know, the folks at BlackRock may not want to touch this at, right now, maybe in the future. And look, we haven't even had a black, excuse me, a Bitcoin spot ETF approved yet. So I think people are getting ahead of themselves a bit. Yeah, I mean, th- th- this would be a very aggressive posture if the, if BlackRock went and did something like this, right? This this would be very, very aggressive towards the SEC. And honestly, it wouldn't get through. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason, the, the, the path we have right now for, for Bitcoin and Ethereum is the CME futures market, and then you have the futures ETFs, and theoretically, that also qualifies based on the Grayscale decision for a spot ETF. Now, obviously, we're not there yet with Bitcoin even, and we're not definitely not there with Ethereum. And we are nowhere on that list at all for right now for XRP. Now, obviously, there are other ways, possibly like a Congress ma- market structure bill, um, a change of administration, new leader at the SEC. All these different things could theoretically happen that would mean that that path isn't the path. But right now, that's the tried and true path that we know that could possibly get us with one of these spot products and XRP has not even gotten to step zero on that list really. Um, and, and as you mentioned, there's, there's, there's all the stuff going on with the, the court case currently with the SEC and, and ripple. Um, so th- there's just too many things up in the air for, for this to have been real. I mean, uh, I was pretty early on, I was pretty skeptical that this could be real <laughs> right when I saw it. Um, but I was like, it, you look at it and it looks identical except for the the name of the actual trust. So uh, whoever did it, did a good job spoofing it, I guess. So you think it's just, uh, you know, some people trying to make a quick buck off the market, you know, playing, playing these games. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll find out more information. I mean, it was still up last time I checked uh, on the site. Uh, I don't know. I don't have enough details to confirm like exactly what that means. Um was it somebody at BlackRock that spoofed it? I don't know. Who knows? Who actually knows what actually happened? Um, but it, it, it's still up there uh, last I checked. But again, 
all of the the comms people, the PR people at BlackRock have confirmed. We've we've talked to the people that are close to the head of I, uh, ETFs in the U.S. for BlackRock, and have confirmed that they have no plans to do this, and this wasn't them. So, I mean, if that's not <laughs> if that's not good enough for some people to right. confirm that this is not <laughs> this isn't them, then I don't know what is. Right. And look, everybody, you know, I've noticed with holding crypto assets, right, uh, their coin is the best. Uh, it must have the biggest partnerships and this and that. So, you know, you're kind of incentivized to kind of, I don't know, is the word shill? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, There's like a, a warring factions that go on in this space that's just a little strange to me. But I, I obviously I get it. I've been around it long enough, but sure. yeah. Um, now, there have been questions coming up about the validity of the Ethereum trust filing. And I, I saw you and Eric and these uh, and the other folks confirmed that the Ethereum filing, in fact, was legit. Yeah, that's legit. We we reached out, similar process. We saw that and we were like, we saw it blowing up and we were trying to figure it out. We reached out to BlackRock. Um, basically, they didn't really tell us it wasn't fake, but they didn't tell us it was real. So that very different from the Ripple situation. They were immediately like, this wasn't us. Ethereum, they didn't really fully comment on it. They were kind of like, yeah. So we were like, all right, this looks like it actually could be real. The guy that filed it was a managing director at BlackRock, which is ironically the same name that was on the Ripple filing. Um, we now know. But so like we we were we were fairly confident it was real because they the comms people would have gotten back to us immediately and been like no they, we didn't do this and then after market closed on that same day um we saw a 19b4 filing which is the filing for the rule change to list these things on uh, a u.s exchange so they they went through and like that's how we would normally see it that's how i'm used to looking for it people have gone to the whole like looking for I guess people registering trust names to to step before the SEC, but the only way to know for sure it's happening is through these SEC, SEC type filings to to confirm um, an issuer's commitment to to launching something like that. Mm. Now let's talk about the Bitcoin spot ETF uh, applications. I saw and and confirm me confirm here for me please because I think I mean for me my information may be a little bit off, but there's a deadline this week, November seventeenth. Uh, can you tell us a bit? I saw Nate Garachi uh, tweet about that. Yeah, yeah. So I wrote, I wrote about this. There's like this window right now. So essentially, there's 12 filings, um, 12 spot Bitcoin filings, um, and they all have different deadlines for the most part. But at the end of September, there we were looking down the barrel of a government shutdown, and the SEC just wiped the slate clean with a whole bunch of these things. So with when the, what happened there is like. You, they all have different deadlines, but you can go early. It's just deadlines, as I keep saying. Like It's just a deadline, but they can go whenever they want before that. But they can't go when it's in a comment period. So after they make a decision, whether it's like it's a delay, at some points they have to allow public comment. So the, the public can come in and say, like, we want this to happen. We don't want this to happen. These are the risks. We're concerned about this. Have you thought about this? Whatever, what have you, right? So those comment periods, I believe need to, we're not 100% certain, um, but technically speaking to the letter of the law, those comment periods need to be fulfilled. So 21 days or 35 days, you can't do anything on the, on the applications during that time period. Those applications ended on no, that that deadline ended on November 8th. So all of a sudden we enter this period where those first nine filers, which include BlackRock, Invesco, Fidelity, ARK and 21 shares, Van Eck, you name it, Bitwise, they are all available to basically have a decision come because mm. there's a deadline. They're not due for a deadline for a few months and they're out of that common period. But we have other filers, Hashdex and Franklin, who are due for a decision on the 17th. Um, Global X is another issuer who's due for a more, uh, there's all these different deadlines, but the, the hashtags and Franklin, essentially, we don't know for sure that they would go into a common period. It seems like sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but essentially they're due on the 17th, like you said. And so there's this window between the 8th and the 17th where the SEC, if they were fixated on approving all 12 at the same time under this 19 before process, that they could do it in this window. And then Global X is also due for a decision on the 21st, mm -hmm. which nothing has happened on yet either. Um, but at 21st, there's a 35 day common period after that. So that would push us into January before the SEC could approve all 12. That said, the SEC just doesn't want to be a kingmaker and they've tried to be fair. They did it with the Ethereum futures ETF. Some issuers couldn't get ready in time with the Ethereum futures ETF launch. 
just they're they're not going to be a kingmaker. There's nine ETFs that are ready to go right now that they could approve at any point from now until January 10th, essentially. And I keep saying January 10th because that's the deadline for that's the first full deadline where the SEC can no longer delay. They either have to approve or deny, and that's for the ARC and 21 shares application. So we're basically just kind of watching right now to see is the SEC going to try to find a window where they can approve all 12 at once, or are they just going to go with things as it comes across and approve whatever's ready? So that any, all nine, the first nine on any list I've put out theoretically could be approved from any point now going forward or denied. (laughs) They could be denied too. (laughs) Yeah. And look, I I think we see the pressure is on the Gary Gensen, the SEC, and and certainly the Grayscale ruling is a big heavy weight on their shoulders. Um, so you're still at, a, I think I saw a 90% uh, chance that this gets approved uh, by, let's say, January 10th. Yeah, yeah. January 10th, we're, we're still at 90%. We think that basically, so there's there's also two processes here, right? So the, the process we're talking about is this 19B4 process. And that's, a 19 before is a proposal for a rule change. And it basically, this case, the rule change is we want to list spot Bitcoin ETFs. Can you allow us? Right. So that's kind of the way that we're we're watching this. Um, the there's also another aspect that needs to be approved by the SEC, and it's called the there. It's based on their S ones or prospectuses. Basically, it's just risk disclosures. How is the the trust going to operate? How is the ETF going to hold the storage Bitcoin? Where is it going to store its Bitcoin? Anything like that. These There are risks to hard forks, just disclosing any possible thing you can think of. Um, and one of the reasons we went to 90% was because we heard through issuers and through the grapevine that the SEC was officially giving comment on those S1s or prospectuses. Um, and it's not something they've ever done on these Bitcoin ETFs. So it's always been this 19 before process. The SEC has done nothing but delay, 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 deny just repeatedly for a decade. And all of a sudden this fall, after the grace, right, right around the Grayscale case, we saw that they started giving comments on these S1s. So basically in order to approve, you need the 19 before approval, and then you need the SEC sign off on the S1 or prospectus. So like one of the reasons we went to that 90% number is because all of a sudden the SEC is giving comments on this, this part of the equation, um, which again, they've never done before. Now they can hold things up just because you get this approval doesn't mean that this is automatically going to come 99% of the time, ultimately, this does get approved, mm-hmm. but it, they can delay things in between. So we could get approval and it could be days, weeks, possibly even months before the S1 uh, gets signed off from the SEC. But ultimately, if you get that 19 before approval, it's m- most likely going to be the case that the S1 also gets approved and these things launch. Mm. Well, I'm hoping it's sooner than later and we have a really good Christmas if you know what I mean. <laughs> I mean, there's a there's a case to be made that like these guys might try to get this all done before the holidays or because who wants to be dealing with this like between Christmas and New Year's and what have you. And then it's also a tight turnaround to go in and then just pick up the pick up all the pieces on January 3rd or wherever it is and get it done before January 10th. But um, there's no way to know exactly exactly how it's going to play out. For sure. Now, are there other ETFs happening? I, I keep seeing little breadcrumbs and news items, you know, not spot, um, obviously, but, uh, you know, other types of ETFs being put out by uh, ARC and, and many other folks. Anything else happening in, in those circles that you can tell us? Um, no, not really. Not related to crypto. Nothing groundbreaking. I mean, we have the ETH futures ETFs, which have gone gotten very little interest from from investors. They've gotten very like I I was kind of like bear. I was more bearish on the the interest uh, that these things would get than my colleague Eric. And they were even it was even worse than I thought it was going to be. So um, yeah, we were we were very underwhelmed with the the flows that went into those products. Um, but again, they're the futures products. There's issues with them. They have to roll. Um, but, um, we're a little more bullish on the, the interest that a spot product would get, particularly from the advisor community, uh, who would be looking at this as like a small portfolio allocation. Think of something like if you're an advisor, you might want to put, if, if you're an advisor and if you are interested in this space, you wouldn't, you're not going to be putting like 50% of your client's money into these things. It's going to be 1%, right. 3%, something in those range, maybe 5%. Um, and they're just not interested, most likely, unless they're extremely into the space and using a futures product. Um, they'd much prefer a spot product. And even then, it might take months, if not years, before they get comfortable using one after it's been tried through 
tried and true uh, and tested in the U.S. financial markets. But we've seen plenty of spot ETFs around the world, mm. both from a lot of these issuers who are trying to launch one here in the U.S. already have them in Europe and in Canada and other places. So um, it, it's based and they've worked flawlessly. Um, so, yeah. Uh, final question here for you. So uh, let's say the Bitcoin spot ETF gets approved uh, maybe early December, right? How long after do you think the Ethereum spot ETF will take to get approved? You know, you think that happens maybe mid 2024? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so ARC and ARC and 21 shares alongside Van Eck on, filed on the same day for a 19 before for the Ethereum a spot Ethereum ETF on September 6th. So like everyone's freaking out about BlackRock filing for Ethereum one. And I'm like, guys, there's five other filers. Hashtags has <laughs> filed already. Invesco and Galaxy have already filed. Grayscale has filed to convert ETHE, um, ET. Um, so like it's already, there's a lot of people that are already in this race. <laughs> um, so we know the ultimate deadlines already. So right, like for BlackRock, we don't know what their deadlines are going to be. I can guess at what they're going to be based on historical stuff, but it's like goes give or take five plus days, sometimes more uh, from what I could expect. But we know for a fact that Van Eck and Ark and some of these other guys are due by the end of May and early June. So assuming, so there's two things to look at here, right? Like one, I'm just going to assume here that spot, because we're, we, we think spot Bitcoin is going to happen, then there's a pretty good argument to be made that spot ETH should also happen because they've satisfied what I talked about before. You, the CME futures launch, now you have um, futures ETFs, and then great. And the court said you can't, dis you can't uh, differentiate between a futures ETF and a spot ETF. So based, using that logic, the SEC launches the spot, allows the spot Bitcoin to launch. Theoretically, that same logic would apply to an Ethereum spot ETF, sure. which would and the ultimate deadline where the SEC cannot punt anymore is the end of May. So I think there's a good chance that we could have these things launch by the end of May, which is not something I would have said six months ago. I would have said no shot not happening in 2024 based on some of the things the SEC has said in the past. So um, I, I do change my mind. That said, it's nowhere near as confident as we are on the spot Bitcoin stuff because yeah. one, they've been around a lot longer. The Ethereum futures ETFs just launched. Um, and also the Ethereum network is very different, right? They're staking. Gensler has said that he has issues with it. He's not fully admitted that this thing is a commodity, despite there's a lot of other backend things that might hint that it should be. Um, so it's not nearly as like, we're not nearly as confident. We haven't put out numbers on that yet. Um, but it's, it's possible that it could happen by May of 2024. That's a great point on the staking because that is a big issue right now and that the SEC is going after exchanges on that. Um, so that's to be seen. That could be, certainly be a hurdle uh, that slows it down. But fingers crossed that it can happen. <laughs> by yeah, May. I mean, th there's way there might be ways around it, right? Like a lot of this is a give and take between these issuers and the SEC. And for years, there was no give from the SEC on this topic. Um, and it seems like there's a lot of things that have forced them into giving a little. Um, but there are ways potentially around it, like, all right, we're just not going to stake. It's just going to be sitting cold storage and what have you. Maybe that would satisfy the SEC concerns. Who knows? We, th those conversations, as far as I'm aware, are not happening yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and they probably won't happen for months until we see this everything settle down with um, the Bitcoin side of things. Well, James, like I said, I'm hoping for a, a great Christmas. So hopefully the SEC approves a batch of these Bitcoin spot ETFs. We see a, a, a really nice rally and yeah, <laughs> going to the we'll year see. celebrating. We'll see. I've been, I've been, I've been watching this space for a long time. And uh, w w honestly, if, if it doesn't happen, I'll have to eat a, a lot of crow uh, <laughs> for, for, for our call, our team's calls on this space. So um, I'm hoping you're right. Uh, James, thank you, man. Uh, always great insights. I appreciate you. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Tony.